my name is Dr. Melissa Stiles from the University of Wisconsin Department of Family Medicine, and today's Fan Medcast is on Warfarin Management. I'm happy to be joined by Brian Kasky, who's a PharmD student with the University of Wisconsin School of Pharmacy. Welcome, Brian. Thank you. Why is this topic important? Warfarin is a drug that has a very narrow therapeutic window, so it's a very delicate balance to be able to keep a patient from having a thromboembolic event and also to minimize the risk of a bleeding event from over anticoagulating. There are many medications that interact with warfarin. Which are the most common? There are many, many medications that have interactions with warfarin, and many of them are clinically significant. So. The best advice is that if you're unsure about any possible interaction, make sure to look it up. Micromedics and Hippocrates are all good places to look for interactions. Specifically, antibiotics are a class of medications that are going to be commonly prescribed and can have significant interactions with warfarin. So in most cases, the antibiotics will increase the INR for the patient. There are a few antibiotics that can cause decreased INR, but these are all things to be very aware of when dealing with patients who are on warfarin. A few other classes of medications that will come up, uh, azole antifungal medications and some antiarrhythmics such as amiodarone can also have very significant interactions. Many offices are now using point-of-care testing for INR, and this has been wonderful in reaching the patients and communicating what their INR is. But there are limitations with point-of-care testing. What are they? The main concern with point-of-care INR testing is reliability. For many of the available point-of-care testing machines, if an INR is above 3.0, if the result on the machine is above 3.0, it may not be an accurate result and may need to be retested. Each lab and each machine will have a cutoff point where the INR needs to be rechecked by venipuncture. So it's best to check with your lab, or the lab that's doing the analysis, to find out if the point of care machine is providing an accurate result or not. Let's turn to management. You have a patient's INR in front of you. They're not therapeutic. What are the key components of the history to review with the patient? Well, the first place to start is try to get an understanding for who the patient is and what they're taking warfarin for. So check the medical record to find the indication for warfarin therapy, the goal INR range for this patient, and also make sure you understand the type of test that's being used, whether it is the point of care test or the traditional venipuncture. Looking at prior anticoagulation service notes can give you an idea of what's been happening in the recent past for this patient with their warfarin therapy and can provide you with some clues on how to manage their warfarin at the time that you are interacting with the patient. Then the critical step is to have a conversation with the patient about their INR and about their warfarin, making sure to talk to them about any missed doses or any extra doses of warfarin, make sure they understand how they should be taking the medication asking about any other recent medication changes, uh, starts, stops, change doses for any of their other prescription or over-the-counter medications, asking about herbal supplements, vitamins, any changes in diet, uh, foods that are high in vitamin K such as green leafy vegetables. There are some other food products that have a significant amount of vitamin K in them. So talking to the patient to assess whether or not they've changed the amount of these foods that they're eating can have an impact on their INR. Alcohol is another issue that comes up. Binge drinking tends to increase the INR pretty sharply. So talking to the patient about their recent alcohol use and getting a sense for when and how much alcohol they've used is very important in assessing their INR. Otherwise, other issues to talk about with the patient are evaluating whether they've had any recent illness, such as nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, or fever. Those can all affect INR as well. And let's say you've gone through a very thorough history and nothing comes up. How do you approach dosing adjustments when the INR is not therapeutic? Well, it happens relatively frequently where you have a a case where a patient has no clear reason for why their INR is out of range. The tables that are included in this PowerPoint presentation are 
best used in that case. So if you have a patient with no clear reason for their INR to be out of range, these tables are helpful. If something does come up from your interview and something is clear as to why their INR has changed, then it's more an issue of determining is this a temporary change or a permanent change. So if it's something that was temporary and may have already passed, you may not need to make any modifications to their warfarin at all. It's a matter of assessing whether or not this change will continue to affect their INR if you don't make a dose change. What are the indications for vitamin K therapy? So in cases where patients have significantly elevated INRs, in general, we look at in the absence of bleeding an INR that's greater than 5.0. Vitamin K is indicated for patients who are at a high risk of developing a bleed. So patients who are over 65 years old and have a history of GI bleeds, recent surgery, people who are ill and have poor oral intake or are experiencing diarrhea or who have significant drug interactions, anybody in these categories may be a candidate for vitamin K therapy at that point. Patients who are low risk or who don't show any of those symptoms or fit into those categories would not be good candidates for vitamin K. Well, let's review a case. We have AG, who's a 68-year-old male with atrial fibrillation, has an INR of 5.1 via venipuncture. From reading his chart, you see that he has been taking warfarin for five years, has not had a dose change for nine months. Current regimen is 5 milligrams Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, 2.5 milligrams Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday. There are no clinical significant drug interactions in his profile. When you talk to the patient, he denies any recent medication changes, alcohol or tobacco use, or dietary changes. He recites the proper warfarin dose and denies any signs or symptoms of bleeding or bruising. He does report that he has had watery diarrhea four or five times over the past four days but it resolved yesterday. So a few questions. Do you want to ask the patient any other questions? Does the patient need any dosing adjustments? Is vitamin K indicated? Should he go to the ER? And how would your decision change if this result was from a point of care INR test? So at this point, the history that you have on this patient is pretty complete and it would not be necessary to ask any additional questions. If you did want to ask about some additional bleeding risk factors, that may help you make your decision. Based on his presentation, this patient would be a good candidate to hold one or two doses and would benefit from a weekly dose reduction of about 10 percent or about 2.5 milligrams over the course of the entire week. And then his INR should be rechecked in two to three days to see how much it's decreased. Given that this patient does not have any current signs or symptoms of bleeding, vitamin K is likely not indicated unless he is a high-risk patient, and he would not need to be referred to the emergency department at this time. In the event that this 5.1 INR result was via a point-of-care machine, you would need to verify that with a venipuncture to ensure that that's an accurate result. Brian, in summary, what are the main take-home points for managing warfarin? Are there any resources you would recommend? Well, the main take-home point is that warfarin is incredibly difficult to manage, and that's why it's important to be able to go through this kind of step-by-step -step process to assess what's going on with each individual patient. In the event that you need additional resources to help you make your decision, the CHEST guidelines produced by the American College of CHEST Physicians is available online. It's a free PDF that is incredibly useful and very complete and is the best source of, of information on warfarin management. And just as a reminder, the most important things you can do is to be thorough in your data gathering procedure or process so that you have a good assessment of how to manage this INR and that in the event that you are responsible for just managing a patient over a short period of time, a few days to a week, based on the patient's presentation and your assessment, it may be acceptable in some situations to just tell the patient to continue their current dosing or their previous dosing schedule and refer back to their primary service as soon as they are able to contact them. 
Well, thank you very much.